Night's Journey, Part 3, Chapter 5. I must have slept for only about three hours, for when I awoke, the day was still bright. Alarmed that I had slept too long, I scrambled down from the loft and found Mistress Shin at work. I also found the captured boy sitting at the table, eating. To my wondering look, Mistress Shin informed me that she had decided the boy could stay in the house during the day. Only at night would he be returned to the shed. While she made the explanation, the boy did not so much as consider me, but continued with his food. I requested something to eat for myself, telling her that I was very hungry. She gave me an extra large piece of bread and some cheese. I'll eat outside, I told her. My remark made the boy look up. He thought, I'm sure, that I went because I did not wish to eat with him. At the door, I paused. Where is Mr. Shin, I asked. He went to town, she said, to find the man who owned the boat. He says, thee are forgiven thy work today. Grateful for the easy freedom, I bolted through the door, only to have the young children surround me. Having had no time to ask questions earlier, they promptly demanded knowledge of all I had done. At other times, I might have regaled them with my tale. This time, I went briskly past, informing them I wanted to walk alone. One girl made a show of following me, but I chased her away. I started off in one direction as if to examine my clean britches, which were drying on a fence. When I was sure that no one was watching, I veered off and carried the bread and cheese, hastened north along River Road. The distance, as I have said, was about three miles, but before I had gone by horse. On foot, it took much longer. It was late in the afternoon when I reached the river landing, the approach to Morgan's Rock, and there was a difficulty I'd quite forgot. If I were to act in secrecy, and that I felt the need to do, I could not return home again all wet. It would have been hopeless to explain it away and would have required still more lies, which I wanted to avoid. With that in mind, I took off my boots, breeches, and shirt, rolling everything up around the food I'd brought. I then waded into the channel and walked across, holding the bundle over my head. Happily, the water had begun to go down. I reached the other side and dressed, no worse than the little damp. Then I hastened toward the place where I'd left the girl. As I went, I moved noisily so as not to come upon her suddenly and cause undue fright. But such precautions proved in vain. When I reached the spot, I found her fast asleep. No footfall would have broken into that sleep. I shook her foot and she woke instantly, alarmed. But when she saw it was me, she gave me something of a smile, which broadened when I produced the food. I asked her about her arm. She informed me that it was somewhat sore, although she was well enough. In any case, she was far more interested in what I had brought, which I took to be a good omen. Indeed, she ate with such appetite, it was clear I could have given her twice as much. While she ate, I plied her with questions. What is your name, I asked, your real name? Elizabeth, she returned between mouthfuls. Elizabeth what? Maws. From what place? England. And then from Trenton, I prompted. She nodded. You were running away. Yes. Why? I wanted to know. She looked at me as if she did not understand what I had asked. I felt compelled to repeat it. Why did you run away? I said again. I wanted to be free, she replied with perfect ease. You would have been free in time, I ventured. It can only be worse for you if you're caught. I was owned until I came of age, she said, ten more years. To that, I had no reply. Why were you branded, I asked. This, she considered for a moment. I was a thief, she said. Then you admit it, I said, surprised. She looked at me as if I were a curious thing and shrugged. I stole the ring from a lady. Why, I asked earnestly. A man said he would feed me if I did. Would no one have done that without your stealing? 
It was her turn to be surprised. No, she said with perfect frankness. Why should they? Her answers bewildered me. They were so far from my own understanding. Have you no father or mother? My mother is in England, she answered. My father is dead. Tell me what happened to you, I asked. I was caught taking the ring, she said, and placed in prison. There, I pleaded mercy. That way I gained the king's pardon on promise of transportation. I was then sold to a merchant who brings felons to the colonies. He brought me to Philadelphia, where I was sold for my labor till I become 21 years of age. A Trenton man bought me. And the brand, I dared to ask. Done in the English court. Unable to grasp it all, I turned to what I knew. You ran away with someone, didn't you? For the first time, she refused to answer. Were you really going to Doylestown, I tried? No, she admitted. It's what we agreed to say. We were going to a place called Easton. We were told that it was far enough away so no one would look for us there. They said we could hire out our labor there. But it doesn't matter where you go, I said. People will see your brand. She shrugged again. They say I'm young enough for it to fade. They'll only hunt you and make you return, I warned. When an escaped bondsman is returned, he's whipped in every county through which he has passed. It's the law. You said you'd help me get away, she said. It's a crime to do so, I told her. I never asked you to help, she rebuked me in a sudden anger. Then, seeing she had upset me, she spoke in different tones. What's your name, she asked. Peter York. Her thoughts seemed to drift. Suddenly, she blurted out, Have they caught my friend? I nodded. Did they hurt him? She whispered as if afraid to ask. She watched my face carefully. No, I said. They did send word to Trenton, though, to say he's been captured. I could see she was very upset. Where is he now? She wanted to know. At my home, I told her. He's allowed to stay in the house during the day. I wanted her to know that. Will you tell him I'm here, she asked. If you want me to, I said. She searched the ground and finding a twig, picked it up and began to pull it apart. He's not a thief as I was, she began. I stole that ring from a jeweler to whom he was apprenticed. He took pity on me and though younger than I, he tried to help me. He was the only friend I had, but they found him out and used him to track me down then brought him to the magistrate as well as me. We were both put in prison. When we were transported, we stayed together. It was very bad where we were in Trenton. He swore he'd run away. I begged him to let me go with him. She'd been looking at the ground while she talked. Do you still mean to help me get free? I. I mustn't leave him, she whispered. Could you let him go free as well? He'd do no harm. Hurriedly, I stood up. I've got to go, I announced. I'll come again as soon as possible. I'll bring more food next time. What about him? She pleaded. But I was already moving off. I didn't want to answer that question. And we'll go on with chapter six in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. I love you guys. As Tigger says, Ta-ta for now.